Well, now, the two main parties in Israel are neck and neck after a second general election in just over six months. That's according to the exit polls. Former military chief Benny Gantz's Blue and White Party has only a wafer-thin lead over Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud Party. But neither of them has claimed victory nor conceded defeat. Official results are yet to be announced. Netanyahu called the unprecedented rerun when he failed to form a coalition after a general election in April. Well, the Channel 12 preliminary exit poll is giving Netanyahu's Likud party 33 seats and Gantz's Blue and White Alliance 34. Now, both are well short of the 61 seats needed for a majority. The, the Minority Arab Alliance, that's the joint list, is set to come in third with 11 seats. And predicted to be in fourth place is the man who could play kingmaker or indeed kingbreaker. Avigdor Lieberman heads up the far-right Yisrael Betenu party. It's predicted to win eight to ten seats. Well, Gantz says he's open to a possible national unity government. You, my friends, are an important part in the change. You are the change after the real, true results come out. We will meet to say thank you, but we have to be patient and wait for the things to happen. Our correspondent Hoda Abdul Hamid was there at the Blue and White Party headquarters in Tel Aviv. Certainly a more cautious and poised tone used by Benny Gantz this time round. He stopped short of calling uh, a victory. He did say very clearly that one must wait for the final results that should come out later on Wednesday. But Benny Gantz and the message really coming out from the other leaders of the blue and white uh, joint list is that Israelis this time round have voted against a politic of hatred, a politics of division, a politics of corruption, so clearly pointing the finger at his arch rival Benjamin Netanyahu. That said, even if he if he wins uh, over the Likud party of Netanyahu, uh, the task ahead is very complicated. He needs to try to form a, a coalition government, uh, or maybe has to heed the call of uh, Avigdor Lieberman and try to form a national unity uh, government. Uh, the first step will be uh, to wait for the final results. Then uh, there will be a meeting with uh, the. Israel Israeli President Rivlin, who should be tasking uh, Benny Gantz uh, to try to form our government. He could also decide uh, to uh, actually go for the national unity government route. So in that case, he will be tasking uh, probably also Benjamin Netanyahu. That's where the problem could arise, simply because Benny Gantz made it very clear throughout this campaign and the previous campaign that he would never be in the same government as Benjamin Netanyahu. Well, despite failing to come close to that majority mark, Netanyahu remained defiant. It's better to lose one's voice than to lose the country. We have stood together in unity throughout the elections and we will stand together in all the tasks which are in front of us for the sake of the State of Israel. And our correspondent Harry Fawcett was there at Netanyahu's Likud party headquarters in Tel Aviv. Well, Benjamin Netanyahu is leaving the stage now, having made a speech of defiance, a speech where he talked about negotiating towards a strong Zionist government, one which would not be made up, he said, of Arabs. He continued his uh, very consistent and, uh, in, in some quarters, extremely troubling speech that he's been making for several days now about the threat implicit in a high Arab turnout and the involvement of uh, Palestinian-Israeli uh, politicians in the future uh, government of Israel. But what he didn't mention was the fact that, according to the numbers so far, he doesn't have the kind of mandate which would allow him to dictate terms. Benny Gantz, the leader of the Blue and White Party, has made it clear that while he too is waiting for the final numbers, he feels that Israel has voted for a change. He assumes, his party appears to assume, that they will be given the first opportunity to try to negotiate a coalition government. Neither side, as things stand, appear to have a, a fully uh, foolproof mandate that you need at least 61 seats 
in the Israeli Knesset of 120 seats to guarantee the ability to govern. A lot depends now both on the Israeli president, Reuven Rivlin, who he gives that first opportunity to, and to the Arab joint list parties led by Ayman Odeh as to whether they will give some kind of tacit or even more enthusiastic support to a potential Benny Gantz government. And it depends on Avigdor Lieberman, the leader of the Israel Betenu party, the man who pulled out of the coalition talks at the last minute back in May, who stymied Netanyahu's attempts to govern. Will he do so again? There are all sorts of open questions as Israel enters the next round of this fight to govern itself. Well, Al Jazeera's senior political analyst Marwan Bashara says that even the best outcome in this election will be bad for Palestinians. Today's elections were basically a referendum on Prime Minister Netanyahu. Although he served four terms already, but he's also been basically indicted by Israel's general prosecutor or attorney general uh, uh, on a number of uh, fraud uh, cases. But as an incumbent prime minister, as an incumbent candidate, he was able to pull a good number of alliances, whether it is with President Trump, friendships with the likes of President Putin and President Modi of India, and hence looking like a very presentable, uh, very, very uh, presidential prime minister, uh, if you will. But yet, because he committed to a narrow uh, right-wing uh, coalition with the religious, that angered a lot of secular Israelis who basically rallied around the blue and white party as well as uh, uh, the Russian-based party, uh, Israel Beteno. So today, Israel basically is paralyzed between a nationalist religious camp and a secular religious camp. That is of course, part of a Jewish collective. The Palestinians basically are left out of that. And that's why many expect that next, uh, based on the exit poll, uh, there is no real practical scenario other than a so-called national Jewish unity government, where blue and white party, if they are the leaders, uh, uh, join Likud uh, in, in, in such a government, perhaps with uh, Yisrael Biteno of uh, uh, Victor Lieberman. Now, what that means is that Prime Minister Netanyahu will have very little chance leading any such uh, nationality government, which also means he could probably end up in prison. Now, that is as far as Israelis are concerned. But what does this really mean for the Palestinians who have been living under occupation for the last five plus decades? Many Palestinians uh, reckon that a, a national Jewish unity government would probably project more uh, a threatening posture, if you will, towards uh, them in the occupied territories. So you could say that the sweetest scenario out of the Israeli elections for the Palestinians is terribly bitter. And not, last but not least, of course, the Trump administration uh, has uh, placed all its bets on Prime Minister Netanyahu. They've invested heavily on him the last two years. The fact that he may not end up being the next prime minister, that might uh, uh, put a wrench in the whole so-called deal of the century. For the next few weeks and months, we're probably going to be in protracted negotiations among the parties, and we might end up with basically more of the same right-wing Israeli policies with Palestinian suffering on the other side of the wall.